Uh, so welcome to the Digital Map Marketing Masterclass Series. My name is Dan Gretsch. I'm the CEO and founder of BizHack Academy uh, and uh, thrilled to be bringing you uh, the amazing Alex Oliveira, one of BizHack's lead instructors, to talk uh, about the secrets uh, of online lead generation from a marketing master. This is the second of season two of our masterclass series. Uh, we are halfway to our goal uh, of reaching a thousand businesses before the new year. We have one more amazing masterclass coming up uh, in two weeks from today, the top 10 digital marketing trends for 2022. Please come in two weeks and tell your friends about this amazing um, uh, you know, service that the mayor's office, uh, BizHack Academy, in partnership with South Florida PBS, are offering to the community. Next slide, please. So uh, back one, please. So today we're gonna be talking about the top five secrets to attract customers online from marketing master Alex Oliveira. Um, this is part of the Strive 305 initiative from the mayor's office. Next slide. Uh, this is the office of the Miami-Dade mayor, Daniela Levine Cava. And the Strive 305 initiative is really a comprehensive set of, of resources and, um, and tools that small businesses can use to help them grow. And we're the first uh, founding partner uh, of the program and we're thrilled uh, to be giving you these masterclass series uh, in partnership with our amazing mayor, Daniela Levine Cava. I wanted to thank uh, our community partners, um, uh, uh, South Florida PBS uh, and the Health Channel, uh, as well as a number of great organizations uh, who have been uh, helping uh, partner with us. Uh, I'll list their names now. Uh, the American Marketing Association of South Florida, Aventura Marketing Council, Access Helps, Beacon Council, the Coconut Grove Chamber of Commerce, the Coral Great Gables Chamber of Commerce, Creation Station in Broward County, the Cutler Bay Business Association, uh, ICABA, the Miami-Dade uh, Chamber of Commerce, the Miami Bayside Foundation, South Florida Integrated Marketing Association, uh, Interactive Marketing Association, and the Miami Foundation. Some of the top business support organizations uh, in South Florida are, are behind this effort, uh, and we couldn't be more proud. Um, I did want to welcome you. I, again, I'm Dan Gretsch, the CEO and founder of BizHack Academy. I am a business storyteller. We provide coaching and training to help businesses grow, uh, and I'm thrilled to be here. Yeah, and I'd like to... That helped me a lot. Um, yeah, I'll take one for you. Hi, Danilo. Um, welcome. Okay. Uh, I see you're in a loud spot. Do you want to just say a quick word uh, before we? Uh... Yeah, real quickly, I just want to say welcome everybody to this uh, amazing marketing class. I'm really excited about it. I know it's going to be something that we can learn a ton from, and it's part of our, our mission on the Strive 305 here in the mayor's office of Daniela, Daniela Levin Cava to offer this kind of hard hitting marketing expertise that you guys can use to start growing your business. So I'm really excited. Dan, thank you so much. To our instructor, Alex, I'm really looking Looking forward to uh, a great session. Thank you guys so much. Uh, Danilo sounds like he's at a subway station. I can only imagine what it's like to work in the mayor's office, but we know you have a lot of big things going on. Thank you for joining us. Uh, all right, Alex, we can go ahead and advance to your slides and you can get started. Uh, just a quick word about Alex. Oh, uh, we're going to give you a set of thank you gifts. This is important. Uh, back one slide, please. So as part of this presentation, uh, you're going to get a handout with key takeaways. So don't feel like you have to take crazy notes. We're going to give you those notes uh, for you. It'll, this will be part of a follow-up email. We'll give you a link to a recording of today's webinar in case you want to review it or share it with others. You're going to get automatic registrations for our upcoming masterclass sessions. We have one more this year and a whole incredible slate for season three starting in January. You're also going to get information about BizHack's upcoming programs, including a scholarship program that we're using, that we're offering for minority and women-owned businesses impacted by COVID. So if you uh, have been impacted by COVID, if you're a minority or woman-owned business and you want to learn more about our scholarship program, you can go to bizhack.com slash apply dash now, bizhack.com slash apply dash now, uh, and you can 
uh, apply uh, and get into a conversation with me or one of our team members about the different scholarships we have and the different programs and trainings that we have. Um, that scholarship application does come with a free marketing consultation uh, and some other access to materials. And without uh, further ado, uh, the amazing Alex Oliveira, uh, the founder of a lead generation agency called Predict, uh, a man who has personally helped generate 23 million leads for thousands of small businesses, are gonna share five of his top secrets to attract customers online. Welcome, Alex. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate it. Very happy to be here. Um, I'm just super excited. You know, we all share that mission to give back to the community and, and just really help businesses grow. I love the digital marketing space, the online lead gen space, all the different channels and tools that exist out there. They're not all created the same and they're not all for every business. So these five secrets or strategies that we're going to share with you today are five that have worked for pretty much every business I've worked with during COVID and all the way through now, because when COVID hit, things changed a little bit. For many businesses, especially brick and mortars or, or product-based businesses, it, they weren't able to capitalize right away. Maybe their supply chain was was um, shut down. Maybe they weren't ready for the online orders. So they had to prepare. And so many businesses over the last year and a half have definitely changed the way they do business, how they take payments, how their websites are working better for the customer. You want to give that customer a good experience because most of us are on mobile when we shop. And so these five strategies we're going to share with you today is all about helping you succeed and sell more of your products and services. As far as for me, I was born in Brazil, but raised right here in South Florida. I've been here for 30 plus years in the US. I have four kids. My wife and I live here outside of Orlando in Melbourne. And um, for fun, we just love to RV and we homeschool the kids. And um, the digital economy has definitely been good for us. But, um, you know, it hasn't come without its challenges. Even like Lilia and I were talking before we started here today. And we said, look, even though we're in the thick of this thing called marketing and creating content, it, it's always hard. So for you guys, whether you're the marketing head at your company, the director, or whether you're just the business owner, it's always going to be challenging because the Facebooks and the Googles, they're always changing the algorithm. They're always updating the platforms. And so for you, you have to keep up with that because your customer is on the other end, having great experiences with brands like Amazon or Apple. And they don't really differentiate when they shop from a website like that to your website. They're, they're on their same device buying a product on Apple or Amazon. And then next thing you know, they're on your website. If the experience is poor, well, then you're going to lose that lead. So I want to start today to be able to give some context before we get into the five secrets. I want to, I want to explain a couple of things for those of you that might not be as seasoned in the digital marketing and lead generation space. So how do brands drive traffic online? There's really four buckets. There's the own, the earn, the paid, and the shared. I like to focus on the owned. That is your website, your blog, your email marketing, and video. That's all the content that you create about your products and services. And there is no friction between you and your customer. Sure, you need to earn reviews and earn. Yes, you need to do paid ads, whether it's on Facebook or Google, to be able to promote your products. Yes, we have to do social media because all of our customers are on social media. But you don't want to depend on those three other channels to grow your business as much as you do on your own media. So mind your website, mind your content, make sure you're doing email marketing. So we're definitely going to talk about those. But that's mainly how businesses drive traffic online. And then the other model, for those of you that are scaling your business or are looking down the road and saying, hey, Alex, I'm going to really commit to this digital marketing. And when I hit X, uh, um, a number of revenue, then I want to be able to scale my marketing. Well, typically brands you see up here in the left, all the brands, the Starbucks, the IBMs, the Ikeas, all the big brands around the world use affiliate marketing. Now, affiliate marketing, how it works is exactly this way. You have the brands on the left, 
And then you have a process in the middle that is served by the companies that you see on the right, which are called affiliate networks. So if you are a company finding yourself in a place where you go from two salespeople to 20 to 50, then you probably need a lot of leads. And at that point, you really need to put together a affiliate marketing uh, program because instead of buying clicks uh, at retail prices from Google and Facebook, you are working directly with publishers who can put your product in front of their audiences. So you're getting a wholesale price. Ultimately, that's what affiliate marketing is. It's not simply a referral program, right? So most of you know affiliate marketing um, because you know these brands. These are marketplaces. Most people know the the Amazons of the worlds, the Angie's List, the Zillow's, Expedia. These are all marketplaces where service providers meet with consumers, right? And if you are in any of these industries, let's say you're an attorney. Well, if you're an attorney, you could generate leads doing your own marketing on Facebook, or you could buy leads, actual people's data directly from up counsel, people who are in real time requesting information for your product and service. So if for most of you, if you're in business and you have not considered marketplaces to buy leads, it's an alternative. But just to show you how those marketplaces do it, they do it through affiliate marketing. They're buying clicks at wholesale prices. Okay. All right. So before we get into the secret, the, the five campaign musts, no matter what you do, whether it's the five strategies that we're going to discuss today or any other strategy, I always want to audit the website. Make sure you know what's going on on your website. How are visitors going through the entire journey? Is the website fast enough or is it taking three, four, five seconds to load? Because if it is, they're not going to stay there. So make sure your website is functioning at its best, right? Second, understand your target audience. Whether it's Miami, Florida, the United States, we have all the tools so that we can research these target audiences. And some of those tools we're gonna to share at the end of the presentation. Most of the tools are free, which is amazing for us in, in business. 20 years ago, these tools were not available for free. Then focus on your offer. What is your product offering? So if you sell 10 different products, we're gonna assume that one product is number one and is the one that sells the best. There's gotta be a reason that's your best offer that you're selling the most from one specific product or service. Focus on that one if you haven't done digital marketing or lead generation online, because that product is going to tell me that your customers already, they already accept. There's a proven track record. Then from there, once you acquire these audiences, then you can think, okay, now I'm going to promote other products. But the product offer is very important and make sure that you have a compelling offer that people can get, get on board with, whether it's a freemium, a free consultation, um, or anything like that, depending if you're a service provider or a, business, or a product. Now, the KPIs and analytics. I can't talk about digital marketing, lead generation, or recommending anybody, any small business spend or invest money in digital marketing if they know, don't know their numbers. What is happening on your website? Those key performance indicators that you set out every time you do a digital marketing campaign, right? Those are the, the goals, the objectives. You tie that in to the KPIs. But more importantly, you have to be able to read the data. So whether you're doing it with Google Analytics or Facebook Insights or Cloudflare, there's a lot of tools that are free to allow you to know what's going on on your website. Analytics is super important. It's like if you have an ice cream shop, you want to know that physical location. You want to know how many people came in each day and how many people purchased the product. The website is the same. I need to know how many people came in, how many people converted. And, and that is not a very straight line. So you have to understand and these tools give you that sort of data. So make sure you have the analytics. And last but not least, track the footprints of the customer journey. So secret shop yourself. Ask a family member, a colleague, someone to secret shop your brand and tell, tell them, go through the whole funnel, call my business, book an appointment, buy a product and tell us what it's like. Have them you know, find those, what I call the leaky bucket, 
where are the leaks in the process? All of us have it, by the way, right? Because not all employees are going to be consistent on a daily basis. So when you understand your customer's journey, you're going to be able to elevate their experience. All right. So that was, again, a little context, a quick one-on-one for online lead generation, and digital marketing, which prepares us to get into the five secrets. All right. Let's get into secret number one, the ebook. My recommendation for you is create an ebook, a guide, or a white paper. Presumably, you're an expert in some subject matter in your industry. If you can provide valuable content, valuable content in all kinds, it doesn't have to just be an ebook, it could be a video, and we're going to talk about that here shortly. But creating content for your customers and prospects is very, it's a very powerful way to nurture them and expose them to the great company that you are. And, and what I like about ebooks, they are a little bit taxing to create and it takes quite a bit of research. But once you've created that ebook, and it could be as little as 20 pages, it could be as much as 100 pages, you'll have created so much content that you will then be able to repurpose all of that content for your business throughout the year. And whether you're an attorney, whether you are a mechanic, whether you're a, a chiropractor, a dentist, a real estate agent, pretty much every industry, there is room for you to write and create content to educate people about the industry. And sometimes a, a guide could be something as simple as, um, let's say you, you're selling a product online that, that, that cleans cars. Uh, your product washes cars better than everybody else's, better than Meguiar's. Well, if it's a new product, people might not know how to, how to use it. You would then create a, a sort of interactive ma uh, manual, a guide, so that people can understand. And you might do that in a form of a slideshow or a video. But in, in either case, the, the piece of content that you're going to create here is what we refer to in, the, in our industry as a lead magnet. It's a lead magnet. People will give you their email, your consumers, your customers, they will give you their email, potentially phone number, first name, last name, in exchange for this valuable piece of content. Okay? So what do you need to create this ebook? Well, you need expertise and you need passion because while you could outsource it to someone, let's say here, I look below here, I gave you some service providers, BookBaby, Fiverr, Text Broker, Upwork. You could find ghostwriters that can do that ebook for $500 or $1,000 or $2,000. Obviously, they have to have some expertise in your industry. But what you're going to find with that is that no one knows your business and your product better than you. So my recommendation is that even if you're going to do an MVP, a minimum viable product, so 20 pages, do it yourself. Now, you know, set a timeline. We're talking about here number three, plan time and budget, which ties back to researching the topic. It may take you a month to research that topic, the right keywords. It may take you some time to look at what your competitors are doing. Maybe there are ebooks out there that already cover your topic in depth. Well, you're going to have a different view. So that don't, don't worry about the competition so much other than to understand how their workflow functions. When someone downloads, what does the thank you page say? Does it trigger an automated email? These are the things you want to think about. And then how are you going to promote it? Because I don't want you to create an ebook Put it out there and hope that they're going to come because they, do, they won't come. If you build it, they will not come. If you build it, you need to know how to promote that piece of content. It doesn't have to cost an arm and a leg. It's important that you know your KPI and your lead goal. Number five here is what is your lead goal? What is your sales goal? If you're an e-commerce, you're going to say, if I create this piece of content, I want to sell $5,000 worth of product. Or if you're a service provider, you might say, I want to generate 100 leads and I'm hoping that I can close 10 out of the 100. You have to have these goals. Now, here's a when you see this little um, icon here, it's got like a little uh, chart. 
every time you see this, this is sort of the supporting case study from a real campaign. The ebook for this campaign, you can see here, ran the promotion from January on the uh, lower right-hand corner, from January through March, uh, a month and a half it, it ran for on Facebook and Instagram. Then on the left chart, you see PPC, that's pay-per-click ads on Google ads, right? Using Google ads. And the top chart that you see is the email marketing. So when you look at those three channels to promote the ebook that was used, here was, well, here was the results. More than 50,000 people were reached, over 2,700 clicks was generated and 421 leads were generated for the sales team to pursue. Now, of course, as a business owner, you're thinking, great, Alex, I've got 421 leads. How much did this cost me? Well, the promotion for this particular campaign cost somewhere around $4,000. And the ebook, to create this ebook, it ended up costing about $1,500. So you can spend half of that. You can spend less. It's up to you. Ultimately, only you know what your marketing budget is and how much you want to grow. But this is to give you an idea of how powerful an ebook can be. So for some of you, you might be saying, Alex, I, I know all those service providers. I know Upwork. I know Fiverr. I know Text Broker. There's another really amazing tool that is built by Jarvis, this company called Jarvis. They use artificial intelligence to create copy for you. They can actually create, a, uh, a with coding, create an ebook. You enter in all your keywords, all your hashtags, and you create an abstract about the subject matter you want to cover, and, and then it goes to it. Now, you probably will have to watch the tutorial for about an hour, solid, before you understand how the software works. And, and the software, they have plans from 20 to $30 a month, and you can also use their freemium. But if you're short on time and money and you need great content and you're saying, I'm not a writer, Alex, but I can't hire someone, try Jarvis. You can start by creating a series of blogs that's another idea for an ebook. Let's say you created 20 blogs in 2022. By the end of the year, you would have 20 blogs that could be put into a, a, a displayed into an ebook, right? So that's the ebook there. And then the last piece of ebooks and lead magnets in general that you guys really have to know is you have to know that you, you, you need automation. So this particular software here called Active Demand is a, a lot like MailChimp, Constant Contact, HubSpot, and others. You create a lead funnel workflow. So let's say that top little box there is the ebook. The person has given you their email. Well, the next box is it triggers an email with the link to the ebook. Then if they open that email, then you start to create a sequence and a workflow. If they open it and download it, they go here. And if they don't, then they go here. You create this automation that takes away all the processes that is probably done manual for most small businesses. So it's very important that you automate this because people are gonna be downloading your ebook 24 hours a day. All right, secret two, let's go on to secret two, the masterclass. We're doing a masterclass right here. So you know that a masterclass works, okay? But I also wanna give you this case study about building a masterclass, which is also known as a webinar. This client right here, Ron, who lives in South Florida, runs an online school for behavioral therapists and, and, and health professionals. He is right now, as we speak at one o'clock, doing a webinar, okay? Now, let's take a look at how, how Ron did it. Ron created a series of webinars that had not worked or produced any revenue for him in the past. Now, with this particular one that's gonna go on today, he spent a total of $200 $200 over the course of a month promoting the, the masterclass. And the top chart on the right that you see, these are the Facebook campaigns. You can see here, some campaigns only spend $10, $5. Um, $70 was spent on LinkedIn. And then YouTube ads, was uh, they spent $31 and, and got about 300 views. All of this marketing costs less than $200 for him. Obviously, the big lift, just like the ebook, was the time to create the copy for your masterclass, right? You and I know that for BizHack and, and for, for our partnerships here, myself, 
in order for us to put this masterclass here together for you, we spent tens of hours, right? Because you want to give the viewer the best, most accurate, thought-provoking information possible. You don't want people to waste time. So I will caution you that if you do a masterclass series, you've got to have your heart in it. So the results after $200 in building a series, uh, and he started this back in August of this year. He had two guest uh, speakers. And then in today's uh, webinar that he's doing, a masterclass, he and his wife are the actual speakers. They had over 100 people register at $50 a pop. That's $5,000. And let me tell you, before I talk to Ron, last year, he said, Alex, webinars, they're like emails. It's dead, right? Uh, you, you're going to give it for free. It's not worth the time. I said, well, you don't have to give it for free. You can charge people. As long as the, the information is valuable, you can charge them. And here it is. The test was this, $200 uh, towards promotion on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Google ads, and 100 people, $5,000. Now, I want you, and you could see here, his link was up to 100 participants. Once it reached 100, the class was full because they wanted to make sure they had a good ratio from, from instructors to participants, right? But now he knows that he can sell that much. He's going to continuously grow. But I want you to think beyond the masterclass. When, once you create that masterclass, if you are as lucky as Ron to actually generate revenue from the masterclass, which is the content you create, you have to think that that class, you spent an hour with people. That's so important. I don't take that lightly. Just like you guys sitting here today, I, I cherish that and I feel honored. But it's that awareness that you're going to create down the funnel. People will know your brand. They will have interest in your product or service. They will consider buying your product or service. And hopefully you do convert them into a lead and eventually a sale or purchase of your product. So if you do decide to do a webinar series, it's important that you create ads. Don't make this mistake this roofing company did. This was not an ad about um, uh, webinars, but it's just an ad that I'm trying to show you. When you have an ad, you need a, a good landing page on the right. So this company, All Tech Roofing, created an ad on Google Ads. Wonderful. They're getting charged three, $4 a click. If you're the user, you go from here all the way to the right on the landing page. What's the problem with this landing page? You can see right next to these two arrows. Social media links on the header, no good. If you're sending someone to a page because you offer them something, you don't want them to click on any other links. So if you have social media links on your header, make sure you remove them if you're sending paid traffic there. Number two, the call to action on the button, that form that we see on the right, it says submit. Submit is not, it's not a good call to action. It's very generic. You want to try something else, like get a quote, book an appointment, something more sticky. I'll, I'll go right through that one in the interest of time here. And if we have time, I'll go back to it. It's another case study for the webinars. Let me, let me stop real quick here. We're at a, a point where we're going to go into secret three, but I want to make sure I'm covering the questions. Um, Lilia, are there any questions? burning questions that I need to answer now, or should I keep going? I think you can keep going, Alex. There is no question. Yeah, the, the, no questions yet, but we haven't encouraged them either. Guys, okay. if you have a question, there's a Q&A box at the bottom. Just click on that and put in your questions. This is your time, right? You're here, you're paying attention. You have lead gen questions. You know, now's your chance to ask. I'm going to ask ours. Um, so, Alex, you are in the midst of uh, kind of uh, giving an example of secret number two, which is the masterclass series that you're part of. Um, do you want to just comment a little bit about how BizHack and the Office of the Mayor are using the, uh, the masterclass series as a lead generation tool, as a tool to build trust and credibility in the community? You want to talk about to what extent what we're doing is a best practice? And frankly, if you have any advice on how we could do it better, I'd love to hear that as well. Well, thanks, Dan. I appreciate that prompt because I think the way BizHack is doing it is really the best way. They're offering it for free. 
Okay, that's number one, but they're doing it through a partnership. So Dan and the team at BizHack, they can create content on their own, but think about it. It gives them more credibility and it reduces their liability and time and money to be able to create this content. I can tell you from working with Dan and the team at BizHack that the bar is set very high. So it's not simply putting together some slides and saying, hey, I want to be a presenter, Dan. No, the partnerships that BizHack has with the community and uh, marketing associations are, are very, very serious. So again, I'll go back to that point that I made. If you're going to create a master series, whether you're doing it in-house or with subject matters or your peers, someone in the industry it could be your vendors, it could be a customer, make sure that they have their heart in it like you, set some guidelines for the type of the quality. Are you going to do it in the length of 30 minutes? Is it an hour? Is there a follow-up? Are there materials that you're going to hand out at the end? Like, like we're going to do here for you today, a handout with a, with a, a checklist that you can use. Um, are you going to keep the recording and then share it with everyone after the fact? What These are all questions that you have to ask, but the best practices um, you're, you're seeing it here in real time, the partnership with the mayor's office to help small businesses. And it didn't take a minute to get here. That I can tell you. So set the expectations, be realistic. Who's on a team? How much are you going to spend? And um, yeah, that budget is absolutely important to be able to promote it. So perfect. Um, you know, why does BizHack do these webinars? Well, we do it because it fulfills our mission to help business owners and their businesses grow and thrive. Uh, we are a coaching and training company, and we help small businesses in particular. And so by doing these webinars, we are sharing the wealth of resources and expertise of our instructors, and we're helping also to associate ourselves with amazing uh, trusted providers of resources like the Office of the Mayor and the more than a dozen community partners we have. We don't charge for these, but we do ask you to give us your contact information, and that's really the lead generation exchange. And then we will continue to promote to you uh, our paid and free programs, and it's completely up to you whether to continue that relationship and ultimately deepen it. So that's how BizHack uh, employs secret number two um, and, 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 and why we do what we do, because it fulfills our mission uh, to support you, the small business. Um, and and uh, one of the ways that we're hoping to fulfill our mission and continue to allow these to be free is to seek out funding for this series so that it doesn't have to be a volunteer activity like it is right now. So back to you, Alex. Um, we did have a uh, interesting question, which is um, probably the answer is going to be no, but are you related to Norton Oliveira from Anilam? No, I'm not. <laughs> uh, just so for those of you that don't know in Brazil, Oliveira is like Smith. <laughs> so there's a lot of Oliveiras out there. All right. Well, uh, on to secret number three. Let's do it. All right. Video. I know some of you are going to say video, Alex. I'm not going to do video. It takes so much to production. I don't feel the confidence. Well, you got to feel the confidence. If you love your business, you got to get in front of the camera. It doesn't have to be you. It could be an employee. It could be someone you hire, but you got to get video out there. We know how customers are searching for you online, whether it's on your website, through the content, through social media, is by engaging with video. Dan can tell you, Lily can tell you, any marketer can tell you that Facebook, Google, LinkedIn, every platform out there digitally will always favor video to any static content. And that goes both for organic content that you create as well as advertising, right? So definitely create videos. And to create videos, I'm going to give you an example here. Here was the same company that I showed you in the example of the um, uh, master series, ATI CE classes. So they had no presence on YouTube. What did we do? We created a video series, small, short videos. These are you know, anywhere from 15 seconds to as much as in this case was 46 seconds. The goal was not to generate leads. You have to know your objective first. The goal with YouTube video ads here was to elevate the brand and product awareness. It, they had no awareness or, or branding 
that we could find on YouTube. YouTube continues to be the number two search engine. They're also owned by Google, as most of you know, but that's where people go. Some people are visual uh, searchers. Instead of going to Google, they may go search on YouTube for anything under the sun, how to's or even just products. And if you're advertising there, they're going to find you. And if, they, and if you're not, then they don't. But ultimately, once you run these videos long enough that are costing on average three cents per view, three cents per view, it's not much. Imagine what you could do for $100 with a video on YouTube. You could have thousands of views. The goal with that awareness is to get you to clicks, leads, and also generate some search engine optimization visibility. Once you graduate from there, then you can say, okay, now I know how this Google ads slash YouTube ads work. Then you can create actual uh, YouTube lead ads. So these are Google lead ads, just like I'm going to show you on Facebook, meaning I'm watching the video on YouTube and towards the end of the video, there's an embedded form. So it's like frictionless. Instead of you having to watch the end of the video and then click and be redirected to the website to collect your information, the information, the lead is actually collected right there on the video. And then you can download the information and follow up with the prospect. So if we're looking at this campaign from December of last year to November of, of this year, here's the total campaign for CE classes. Over half a million impressions, uh, 69,000 views, over 2,000 clicks. The clicks on average is costing $2.00. Whereas if I ran it as Google ads, the clicks would cost north of $5. So I'm getting the not only the visual branding equity, but I'm also creating the awareness. And so you can see here, the average cost per view was six cents. So you can do the math. If you set a budget of say $500 for, for 2022, you can get pretty good traction on YouTube with your ads. So again, I'm not... I'm never going to recommend that you create a campaign without having a clear objective and goal, all right? Once you do that, then you can start to measure and say, did the video generate clicks? Did it generate leads? Am I getting phone calls? Because that's ultimately the goal for you guys. All right, secret number four. I was just talking about Facebook lead ads. And Facebook lead ads, we are experts at this in at uh, BizHack. We teach a whole course around Facebook lead ads and awareness ads. The example that I'm giving you here is a local law firm that did a, a um, sort of a social campaign. Instead of doing what most law firms do, which is to say, hey, call us here because we're the best attorney. We got this person a million dollars or $2 million. This campaign was last year during the election. And it was just a community service announcement, right? Think of it like a PSA. Their goal was to let, to promote voting in the community, why voting mattered and how the Supreme Court worked. So it's educating people in a, in a very entertaining way because we created slideshows. And then at the end, the, we would be able to collect the customer's information because we were asking them to subscribe to a newsletter to learn more, right? So in the case of the local law firm, here's what they generated from July through October. The, the uh, campaign ended right before the election um, uh, took place. But you can see here, they spent a total of $7,000 on Facebook lead ads, and they, they reached over 70,000 people and generated over 200 leads. And I know you're a business owner. You're saying, Alex, I see the middle number there. The cost was $35 per lead. How much did they generate in sales? Well, it wasn't out of this water. Uh, it wasn't out of the water. I mean, it wasn't like out of this planet, I guess. I mean, in the sense that sometimes you'll see case studies that'll tell you they invested $6,900 and then sold a million dollars in product. That's typically not the case. This is typically the results you can expect if it's done well. Of the 202 leads the law firm generated, they ended up getting seven clients. And when you look at the seven clients, the average client brought in $4,000. So seven times four is 28,000. 28,000 was the revenue 
for generating leads on Facebook, $7,000 was the cost. Fantastic. That works. That's 400% return on investment, which you typically can't get in the stock market. Maybe if you do cryptocurrency, but I mean, you have to think of it as an investment for your business. If you invest in equities or if you invest in, in cryptocurrency, it's no different. You have to invest in your business. And when you're doing content, creating an ebook, doing video, in this case, doing lead ads, it's absolutely an investment. Now, you have to be thoughtful about that investment. You can't just put out some ads and hope for the best. I mean, there's a lot that goes into it. You know, what kind of offer are you going to have? Do you really know your audience? What about your competitors? What are they doing? Which we're going to share a tool with you here shortly that allows you to do that competitive research. What conversion rates can you expect? Does your, is your sales team ready to follow up on phone calls? So there are a lot of questions that you have to answer, and I want you to answer them before you ever think of spending a dime on advertising with YouTube, Facebook, Google, or any of the other platforms. You really have to answer those questions. I mentioned to you five musts right before we started the five secrets. One of those is the website audit. If you go to the website semrush.com, which we're going to share the link here with you as well. And maybe Lilia can share it in the, in the, in the chat. semrush.com, put your website in there, the domain, and run an audit. It's free. It's going to run an audit on your website and give you back all the information about what's working, what's not. And maybe you already know what's not working and you are just procrastinating on fixing the issues with your website. Trust me, I've done that. And I'm in the business, but it's important that if you're getting people coming to your website every day, hundred people, 200 people, a thousand, they're there just like a storefront. You have to be ready. You have to be ready to open. I'll give you an example that happened today that wasn't virtual, but that's sort of what could happen if it was virtual. I went to Barnes and Nobles for a meeting uh, where they have a Starbucks and it was it was 9.05 a.m., 9.05 a.m., and I op try to open the doors, and the doors were still locked. And I look at the door, and it says 9 a.m., and I'm looking inside. It's Barnes & Noble. It's a huge corporation, not a small company like, like, like us here, you know? No, they weren't open. They weren't ready. Well, what did I do? I called the person I was meeting, and I said, hey, the Barnes & Noble is closed. Let's go meet at Dunkin' Donuts. What's the point? It's the same thing with your website. If people come to your website and things are not running at full speed, they leave. They go to your competitor. They're not waiting. So it's really important that anytime you spend money on ads to send people to that website, the landing page, the media that you own, it needs to be a good experience. It doesn't have to cost an arm and a leg. If you're e-commerce, you could use Shopify. It could cost you 30 bucks a month. You could use a plug and play website like, like a CMS content management system like Wix. You could use an open source system like WordPress and find a developer to build your whole website for hundreds of dollars on Upwork. So, you know, you know what the need is for your clients. And if you have not updated your website for years, you're making a mistake. All that we're talking about here is the digital space, which most of us start and end our days with our smartphone. I, I bet if I asked you guys, if we had a poll right now and we asked you guys how many times you have grabbed your smartphone today from the moment you woke up and then to the time you go to sleep and whether you needed a dentist, an air conditioning guy, a mechanic, a hairdresser, where are you going? You're going on your phone. You're going through a search browser or you're going to social media. You're not going to the yellow pages. You're not looking for a, a billboard or a bench ad. You're not asking mom or your neighbor anymore. You're looking at reviews. So I really want to drive that point home is that all these techniques, tactics, secrets that we're sharing with you, they work. I promise you, I stand behind them. And yes, often we try strategies that do not work. And when they don't work, I let the clients know. We tried this, it did not work. But if you do your homework, it can absolutely work for you. 
All right. So let's say you're generating leads coming off of your ebook, coming off of your video, coming off of your masterclass. What are the lead gen musts? Well, qualify your leads. You don't want to do business with everyone. I know that. Not everyone is able to afford your services. So qualify your lead. Nurture your leads. The biggest mistake you can make is to follow up with a lead for five, 10 days and then drop off. I can give you thousands of examples of lead gen nurturing plans where the first 30 days, the customer, the lead will get upwards of 20 touch points, communications, whether it's a text, a phone call, an email, and then direct mail. And then even six to 12 months down the road, they're still getting phone calls. Think about it. If you're in the automotive space, I've worked in with companies like Ford and AutoNation. The average new car buyer, the average new car buyer does not buy the car for 90 days from the day they started to research it. So that's just fact. So if you're a dealership and your sales guy only follows up with the leads for the first 10, 20, 30 days, he's going to leave money on the table because more than 50% of new car buyers do not buy that car until after 90 days. So nurture your leads. Compliance. Compliance is just basically make sure you don't spam people. Make sure you understand the, the regulations like SMS. There's a regulation called TCPA. There is do not call. Don't call people before 8 a.m. in some states. So be aware of compliance issues and as far as contacting people because privacy is a huge issue, all led by Apple in the past year that, that has sort of changed things. And then the last piece of it in the lead gen, I mentioned it early with the web analytics, is measure and optimize. You've got to measure, take a look at the data, whatever didn't work, get rid of it. That's called the optimization. Get rid of it, switch gears, try something new. All right, last secret, secret number five, because I want to leave room here for questions and for tools. Secret number five is a chat. If you have not considered putting a chat on your website, please do so. This company here, Hire um, uh, Talk, it's called T-A-W-K, Talk. And you can, you can get a free chat on your website where you actually have a real person, not a bot, a real person who can actually talk to your clients and generate leads right on, on that interaction with them. And it doesn't have to cost a whole lot. They have agents from a dollar uh, uh, an hour. And the only thing that you have to do is create that frequently asked question um, that, that customers typically ask you about. So make sure you do that. But it's think about the communication, how it is on your website now. Test with talk. It's easy to install on your website. You could do it in 10 minutes. You're going to find out that this increased conversion, that increased lead flow. I don't know. It's different for everyone. But what we know is that those agents will be able to nurture those visitors coming to your website who have questions, maybe from the ebook, maybe from the masterclass. And then you have some, some different points of data that you guys can look at after the fact here. But I think the one that, um, I see as being the, the, most, um, um, uh, uh, the, the most important data set here is the 42% on the lower left. 42% of chat leads come outside of normal business hours. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I don't have a staff working 24 hours a day. Even though I have staff all around the world, they're not working 24 hours a day. So if you have chat agents talking to your website visitors 24 hours a day, that can make a big difference. Okay. Here's a case study where it was... Uh, um, the, just a quick question from William Hall. Does the chat rep have industry knowledge? Yes, you can, you can definitely choose that. Um, but it is you're the one that has to work with that chat agent representative like you would if you hired an in-house customer service person to teach them about your products and services. Great question. And then... Um, the, the case study here is using Apex Chat. Apex Chat is another one that actually doesn't charge you anything. This is exciting, guys. If you want to deploy chat on your website to generate leads for free, where they only charge you for leads, take a look at Apex Chat. They're out of California. Every case study that I've, I've done with clients who have used Apex, they, we have shown a tremendous uh, uh, um, um, growth in conversion rates once we put in Apex Chat. So take a look at that. I've used it with my attorney clients, healthcare clients. It works. 
And you all, you might ask yourself, like, are the leads the problem? I hear this from business people all the time. The leads are the problem. Well, sometimes it's the salespeople. They come in and they're like, yeah, I'm going to crush it. And then a month later, they're looking like this cat with a beer next to, to its side here. So, and, and, and you know what? It might even be you. Hopefully not. Because sometimes the business owner might not be the best salesperson. So that's the bad news. No, whoever is selling your product needs to know your story and needs to know how to sell, right? So, because if you have good leads, but a bad sales process, you're going to have very low conversion. So this is why I always talk about this, the engage, acquire, and retain. Marketing, sales, and customer service, customer success, customer experience, these three departments, they have to move together in the same direction and at the same time. You have to align all these three departments, super important. So the key takeaways from the five different um, secrets we shared, my question hey, um, to you. Be before we move on from chats, just a quick question about chat bots, uh, which is the automation of chat versus live chat. Yes. So we, we actually have research with clients that chat bots in some cases has actually annoyed the, the user and they will actually leave the website if they think they're talking to a chat bot. So you could build one on Facebook Messenger for free and then program the answers and questions but it, it's not a solution unless you're a, a large brand who is using IBM Watson. That's a different story. That kind of a bot works. But the Mickey Mouse bot that only answers, you know, 100 questions, it might actually kill your conversion. Yeah, the one thing I would say is when I think about chat bots, I think of it like a phone tree. Uh, when you call and they say, like, press one for English, two for Spanish, press one for the... Uh, first thing I'll say is everybody hates phone trees. So just kind of keep that in mind. Like a chatbot is a phone tree uh, in chat. Uh, so you better be really thoughtful about it. But the one thing that you can do, I think, usefully with chatbots is if you're like a um, retail store and you always get the same questions like, where are you located? Where do I park? What are your hours? Then, uh, you know, English or Spanish, like very transactional stuff. And then once you get to that point where they have a question that would be better off with a human being, either then switch it to a human or give them a number to call. Uh, but, but, you know, things like uh, what is your address? What are your hours? You know, those basics, I think, can be handled very fruitfully with a chatbot and, and save you a little bit of time and money. I agree, Dan. That's a great advice there. So, you know, the key takeaways for you guys, we know what the five secrets are that you're going to use. My question to you is what strategy are you going to use? I'm not assuming that you have the time or budget to try all these things. But as 2022 approaches us, I want you to think about your business and what strategies that you've used that has worked. Great. Keep doing that. And which ones we shared here with you today that you have not tried? Try one. Which one is it going to be? What's your offer going to be? The compelling offer, irresistible offer. Who is on the team? Like who on your team is going to be able to work that? Is it you? Is it an employee? Is it a, an outsourced person, a freelancer? That person can make or break the entire campaign if you don't have a specific date of when you're going to launch, which is the next question. And then, of course, the, the question of, of money. What is your budget? How much are you willing to invest in one of these five strategies. And then last but not least, where are you going to promote it? And where are you going to promote it? There's no better place to start for good or for bad. I'm not a Facebook rep. I, I, I get very frustrated with Facebook for a lot of reasons. Um, but there's no better place for you to start your campaign at the lowest cost per acquisition. Or I would say secondly would be YouTube ads are very cost effective as well. So um, we have time for questions. But as you guys start to form, formulate your questions, I want to just share some best practices. And then I, Dan or Lilia, you can, can tell me what questions we get because these best practices will absolutely help you with the five strategies. So designing a thoughtful customer journey. Let's start from the top. You're going to create a really nice content plan. And let's say that in your content plan, you're doing the ebook or the masterclass. The next thing is what landing page on the website are they going to go to? How are you going to automate the email as that customer goes down the journey? And last but not least, how are you going to nurture that prospect, that lead? 
So design a thoughtful customer journey. And if you don't know your customer journey, just ask someone to secret shop you and you'll find out very quickly. Use Google Marketing Platform, which includes Google Analytics. Measure, measure, and measure. That's what the name of the game is. If you can't measure success, then there's no point in doing any of this. You don't have to be an expert, but you have to know how many people are coming to your website, from where, what pages are they going to, how much time are they spending on the pages. This is all data that is important to you. Best practice, A-B test. A-B test everything, the color of the buttons, the, the subject lines in emails, the, the ad copy, the color, video versus image. That is A-B testing, is taking one product, one offer to a specific audience and then testing different variables to see which one will win. And then tools for success. Again, hate to say it, but Google and Facebook collectively own 66% of the top 15 apps. That's a duopoly. Two thirds of the top 15 apps are owned by Google and Facebook. So look, do a Google search for yourself. That's a free tool. Use Google Trends. All these links, by the way, are going to be on, on the guide that we're going to give you at the end, the link. But use Google Trends to better understand. Look at, look at this chart that I'm looking at here on Google Trends. Air conditioning versus heat and ventilation, HVAC. Why am I telling you that? I had a national air conditioning company tell me that most people search for air conditioning by, by typing in HVAC. And I said, no, they don't. You do because you're in the industry and it, it doesn't take long if you do a search on Google Trends to find out that most people, the consumers, search for air conditioning services by using the word air conditioning. Most people don't even know what HVAC stands for, right? So there's what you think and there's what Google is telling you based on real consumer information. Of course, good old Facebook audience tool. You can't go wrong with setting up a business manager account, which is also referred to as business suite and going in there and creating audiences. Like in the case here, you can see, I was targeting people who are uh, expats of South America. So let's say I was targeting all Latinos, all Latinos in, in the United States. You could see on the right age 25 to 60, okay? It gave me an audience size of 4 million and you can see here, the behaviors were people who lived in Cuba, lived in Spain, lived in Puerto Rico, Brazil. If I'm trying to target expats, I can do that on Facebook. This is a free tool. And then you're going to have a better idea of how to promote that product or service. This one is one of our favorite tools. We use it at BizHack with all our participants. The, the Facebook ads library Take any competitor, any competitor that you guys have that you, 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 you are look up to and go to this tool called Facebook Ads Library. We're going to give you the link in the document. You can search for what ads they're running on Facebook and Instagram, even how much they spent on it and which ads are live, which ads are no longer live. It, it's a really important competitive tool. So make sure you use it. This one I mentioned to you guys earlier, SEM Rush. You, it starts with your website audit, but it's really about keyword opportunities. You have a lot of keyword opportunities, and that is a part of optimization. Super important to know on your website. Then we have a bunch of links with resources from Predict to BizHack to South Florida IMA and others. And with that, I will open it up to questions, guys. Thank you. Yeah, Alex, wonderful job. So we are actually out of time. Uh, you've done a beautiful job. Um, we've answered all the questions as they came in. Uh, we are so grateful to you for the work that you're doing. Um, and um, frankly, I'm blown away. This is some of the best lead generation advice I've ever seen, presented simply and with incredible clarity. Uh, I feel so damn lucky that you're a part of our team, man. Thank you so very much. Likewise. I want to share with you guys that in two, yeah, man, in two weeks, we have another amazing masterclass, the top 10 digital marketing trends for 2022. We're going to have Jay Berkowitz uh, from 10 Golden Rules and uh, our lead instructor, Cheryl Patel, back uh, for that. Uh, it'll be the culminating one for the Stride 305 Masterclass Season 2. 
We're going to be then jumping right back in uh, for season three. Alex, you're going to be back talking about Meta, aka Facebook. We're going to have an amazing one on the new Google My Business, which has been enhanced uh, by Google. And we're going to also uh, be talking about all sorts of great digital marketing topics. A reminder that your thank you gifts are going to include a handout with key takeaways from today, a, a recording of this, uh, and automatic registration for the remaining masterclass session in two weeks, as well as information on how to apply uh, for our scholarship for minority and women-owned businesses. Thank you, Danilo. Uh, have a happy Thanksgiving, everybody. And we look forward to seeing you in two weeks for our next masterclass session on the top 10 digital marketing trends for 2022. Have a great and happy holidays, everyone. Thank you, guys. Happy holidays. Take okay. care. Thanks, Thank everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you, Take Alex. Care. Thank you. Thanks to the mayor's office. Bye, everybody.